What's up everybody? What is up? Gary Simon here. Today we're going to talk about collecting emails and I'm going to show you a landing page that I created for collecting emails for my upcoming AR trainer app. Now, if you don't know what that is, there's a playlist right here. There's already three other videos where I describe the idea, but in short, basically video projection software that helps people learn how to play pool. Now, one of my marketing ideas here is to create a YouTube channel where I create videos as a newbie pool player utilizing my software, the video projection software, in order to get better. And so my hope is that people will then go to my website, which I will mention in the videos that I create, and they will enter their email to be notified when this software releases. This is an excellent way to have a great launch day to ensure that you get sales. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that with three different pieces of technology. One is Midjourney AI, which will allow you to generate images through prompts and assets for the landing page. The next up is Figma, which is a UI UX design and prototyping app. And then finally, Framer, which will help us quickly and easily without any code, get this actually working and connected to a service called Get Waitlist for collecting the email addresses. So we got a lot to unpack in this video. As always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And you know what? Let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Okay, so the very first thing that I decided to do was to hop into Discord in order to interface with Midjourney, which is an AI image generation tool to issue it some prompts. And so what I wanted to do is to generate a pool table of some sort and have a projector above it kind of shining a bunch of light rays onto the pool table. And that will serve as the background for the email capture landing page. And so the first one I did is light rays projecting onto a pool table, dark background, AR 16.9 for aspect resolution. Um, after This is the very first one I tried and I thought it was, it actually did a pretty decent job. Now, I didn't really stop there. You kind of want to ask a bunch of different, you know, give a bunch of different types of prompts to see, you know, what type of images you can potentially work with. Like this one down here is really cool. I tried some aerial views and I tried some like synthetic, I added synthetic to the prompt just to get some futuristic, interesting looking pool tables. On and on I went and eventually I found this one, which I liked a lot because I knew I could take in Photoshop, I can get rid of these lights right here and then just put in a projector with light rays ca casting down. So what I did is I took this image and then I pasted it into Photoshop. All right, and then I did a little bit of work in Photoshop. I'm not gonna show you everything that I did like step by step, but I just wanna show you some of the things that I did to prepare it for the landing page. So this was the original. And then what I did is basically just got rid of the light. So if I do a before and after, not too much has changed. It's a little bit darker. Also got rid of these lights at the top and that's main change there. Then I wanted to change the actual uh, color of the red felt. I didn't wanna use red. So I use this color instead right here. So it's kind of like a purplish. Then I did the light rays sort of thing. So this right here, there's multiple ways to achieve light rays within Photoshop. You can use custom brushes, which would be a quick and easy way. You can see it looks like there's like, dust, like kind of like smoke right here or something like that. You could, you could blend things together. What I did instead, because I'm lazy, is I went to back to Discord and I asked Discord, for this picture, all right? So the prompt here is light rays projecting on a dark background. I knew I could cut this out and then just make some modifications to the color and such and get this as an end result. Very cool. After that, I also have a little projector up here that's kind of like positioned. So then what I do is take everything right here, this entire image that you see, and we just save it as a background image, basically, or just copy and then paste it into Figma. So we're gonna use Figma to real quickly create the layout and just visualize what we want this thing to look like exactly in the browser, uh, and then we'll take it into Framer thereafter. All right, so here I am in Figma, and I've simply pasted, copied and pasted this image onto a uh, desktop resolution frame right here. And it's just gonna simply serve as the background. The one thing I also did is take the background of this frame and make sure it matches the background of this image. 
so that that way, if we have a longer page and we go down, it looks like a nice seamless image that's just a part of the UI itself. After that, I went ahead and added the logo that we created in the previous uh, lessons that are part of this chapter. By the way, make sure to look at the playlist and look at the previous videos leading up to this one so that you can follow the whole project. Um, and we have just a real simple, it just says the AR trainer coming 2024. I may change that verbiage a little bit more. Um, but the big thing that's important outside of just the logo is the primary call to action, which is the primary purpose of this project, which is to collect people's email addresses. And so that's the call to action for this particular page. And this is what I designed. It is extremely simple. It's just a primary color of orange to really take I precedence or in other words visual hierarchy it's the, the the most important thing that we want people to see and to click on and to basically fill out their email address and so I decided to make it this uh, this color right here and it's it clearly it's 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 on the forefront and I think it'll do a good job of converting people you know um, from potential visitor into a person whose email I have so that we can then mark it. I did experiment, um, by the way, with this overlay, and clearly this one is way more obvious, kind of going with like a brighter background for it compared to this one. So now that we have that done, and we have the very simple page, now it's a matter of creating this in a Framer and making sure it works. Okay, so here I am in Framer with a new project, and by default, you're starting off with a 1200 pixel desktop frame. Now, if we go back to our Framer here, or Figma rather, Figma Framer, Framer Figma. <laughs> and I just take the whole thing and I right click and I go to plugins and choose Figma to HTML with Framer. If you don't see that in your recents, when you right click, you can come up here. You could do a search and then install that, uh, that plugin. So again, we'll take this, we're just gonna take everything. We're gonna do Figma to, uh, to HTML converter. You're gonna see it says copy 12 layers, paste in Framer. So we go back to Framer and we're just gonna paste in, and it's gonna look messed up, of course. We have some work to do to make this work appropriately. The first thing I'm going to do is work with the background image, all right? So if we switch over to our layers right here, you really have to pay attention to your groupings because sometimes you might wanna make an adjustment and make something 100% width, and then all of a sudden it doesn't respond uh, with, with the side of the browser when you drag it in. It's because you need to make sure you're, you're paying attention to what is a group and what's not. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna right click and just choose remove frame from this desktop three. We don't need that. Um, another thing I'll do is take the actual frame for the background so I can change the background color here. And I take this little eyedropper tool to the same color. Uh, that's uh, of the background image. Same thing that we did in Figma. Then what I wanna do is take the image itself where it says image two, we can call this BG for background. And we're gonna change this from fixed to 100%. There we go. Now that's much better, because now when I drag this in, it's going to be fluid. It's going to scale with the size of the, uh, the browser essentially. Next up is group two. We're just gonna call this header. So I'm gonna double click into that. We're gonna make sure it's centered. So we click this centered alignment button right here. And I kind of probably do want to make this a little bit smaller because it is pretty large. Uh, but if I just push this up while holding shift, we're going to change the, the fact that right now it's bound to the top, which is what this little dashed uh, blue line is. And over here, it's the same value. So you could change this position with your keyboard up and down arrow keys as much as you wish. Um, and then if you want to scale this down, for instance, you can hold shift, just scaling that down a bit and then center that as well. In fact, I'll probably take everything where it says uh, header, and I think we'll add a layout, and then make sure it's just uh, direction is vertical or everything's on top of each other in three rows, and then use the gap property here to increase the white space between these elements. Now, another thing, I don't really like the coming 2024 text that I did. I wanna change that up just slightly. And so in doing that, all we have to do is just go over to this little plus sign and choose uh, transform. We're gonna choose to uppercase it, which now makes it all uppercase, but I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller in size, but increase the letter spacing. And this works well for little tiny little tag lines. And so I think that gives it a nice little kind of sleek appearance, if you will. <laughs> so now let's see what happens here when we, we move things around. Now things are starting to work a little bit better. 
Um, and then we have this form right here. Change that back to form. Sorry, I'm struggling just a little bit. Center it. There we go. That's what I wanted. So now at this point, it's bound to the top. Uh, we can increase this a bit. And again, make sure you have form selected. We're going to drag it up like right around there or so. And this here works pretty well up until like right there, it gets a little bit you know, too close together. And that's at the point where you want to start adding breakpoints where you determine, for instance, things should change maybe right here. You know, So then you would come up here and just choose tablet for the breakpoint. And then you could start to really make adjustments to what is you know, necessary in order to make the, the page still work well at these different sizes. So for instance, uh, one thing we could do is just pull this down and, and that's already a nice helpful uh, trick right there. So we start here and then we kind of increase it. And you just keep on continually making adjustments until you're satisfied with everything, especially in checking it on your phone after you publish as well. So I'm not going to show you the rest of everything I did in that regard for the responsiveness, uh, but I will show you what I ended up coming up in the end. You can see I have a bunch of different artboards, and it's tricky because when you have one of these large background images, they move all over when they're being uh, resized based on the width of the browser. So. Um, other things that I have right here is the other thing that's really important and pay attention to is this part where it says notify me when it releases. Uh, this right here is not the same as the Figma right here. I actually deleted these uh, because if you want to have an input, you can import that input externally already from within Framer. So right here, if you go to, let's say for instance this didn't exist, I just deleted that and we go to um, insert and we go all the way to forms and we do input, this is all this is right here. I just put this beneath it, obviously. And that's all that form element was. And then, of course, you can style it, like for instance, where it says the button, like it has that dark gray background. You choose button and you start modifying like the fill color. And, and essentially, if I back up, that's how I modified it to this. Now, what's important about being able to use uh, the predefined component is the fact that you could choose the service. Um, these are services for collecting emails. Um, get waitlist, MailChimp, FormSpark, Loops. I chose get waitlist, and you just put in your ID after you create your account at get waitlist, and it's a free account. I didn't put in any type of credit card number anyway. Um, I'm sure at some point you would have to, but um, that's all that is. So if I type in get waitlist, here's my dashboard and I was just kind of testing and it just works automatically. So for instance, um, if I go back here to Framer, I hit play and notice I do have some animation that just came in there and I just type in an email address and I hit subscribe Thanks, please check your email uh, inbox for a confirmation email. If I refresh, that's the newest one that I just added right here, uh, literally a few seconds ago. And so it's automatically there already, and the only, the only thing that you're tying it to is, if I get out of here, this list ID right here. That's the only integration that you need to have in order for you to save and store emails in a service like Get Waitlist. Now you can notice also that when I did that, there was a pop-up that showed up that said thank you. And again, that's, this, that's the same thing as uh, essentially right here where it says overlay for this form element. If you select it, you choose overlay. And then I just designed this overlay right here um, using a rectangle tool and then just putting text inside of it. And so you can see what that looks like as well on all the other uh, devices here. So, that right there is the actual landing page um, that works and I'll be tying it to a domain and we'll be collecting emails very shortly for our service. So as always, hopefully you enjoyed that. Make sure to check out the playlist if you haven't seen the other videos that are part of this indie hacking series for me trying to make this software for learning pool a success. And also make sure to subscribe, check out designcourse.com. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.